Dots uh, Jr. I guess I should clarify that, uh, not confusing with his father, Don Gantz Sr. Uh, Don is coming to us. Uh, he's a local uh, guy, graduate of Sullivan Central High School, and uh, also later graduated from UT and started his career at Lowe's here in Kingsport, and then advanced up the company ladder, uh, moved to their corporate office, which at the time was in Wilkesboro. Uh, he's one of the only people I know that's retired two or three times, so, uh, but uh, he retired from Lowe's, uh, then got recruited by Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, went to work for them for a while, uh, retired from there, and now he runs My Dream Vacation Travel Agency. Uh, and Don, along with his family, have been involved in uh, football and, and other sports uh, in the Indian Springs Optimus Club. And uh, but they had uh, very instrumental in the Mountain Empire chapter of the National Football Foundation, um, and uh, he joined that uh, you know, as far as uh, inspiring future leaders for scholarships and so forth. Uh, Don's father unfortunately wasn't able to make it today, uh, but many of y'all may have worked with him at Eastman. Uh, he's a longtime employee at Eastman Chemical, and he was a referee for over 50 years. So. With that, I'll introduce Don. You can come up. Thank you very much. I wanted to start off by saying I invited a special guest that's going to be here in a few minutes. Uh, Jason Witten and Peyton Manning are going to join us for the Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> However, you know what day it is, so we won't go there. <laughs> um, the Football Foundation, uh, the National Football Foundation was founded in the 1940s uh, by, men, by men like Grantland Rice and General Douglas MacArthur. And then here locally, we started it a few years back, it folded and reopened about uh, eight years ago. And the sole purpose is, is trying to promote football in the area and, and inspire our future leaders. And as uh, MacArthur said, you know, football teaches you teamwork, discipline, other attitudes that help you not just in football, but in life and any endeavor you do. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Um, but um, the Hall of Fame, when we, I um, kind of charged to do this myself a few years ago when we were doing one of our scholarship banquets, Randy Sanders was talking about the uh, College Football Hall of Fame that's located in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I, when I stood up and do my little piece, I said, my goal is to bring the Football Foundation Hall of Fame to, uh, to our area and thanks to work from men like Tommy Olderman and uh, Mayor Scholl, we actually have a Hall of Fame open in Kingsport at Meadowview. And that's what Brent wanted me to kind of speak to you about today. Last year we inducted our first, uh, first class of, of men into the, uh, to the Hall of Fame. And each year uh, we'll continue to add to that. For the last eight years we've given scholarships out to uh, several local high school athletes and you know the money we we get from that's from donations and also from the the golf tournament that we run every year um, i brought a couple of uh, trivia questions that i'm going to ask and it's the purpose of them you may you probably you may or may not know the answers to them but the purpose is just to kind of highlight the um, the talent that's come from our area uh, four men have been inducted into the to the national college of hall of fame as both a player and a coach Half of them have come from this area. Two of them. Anybody know who they might be? Bobby Dodd. Bobby Dodd? Steve, Spurrier. Steve Spurrier. Absolutely. Do uh, you know who holds the record for the most points scored in a single game? It's, the, it's both the Tennessee record and the Virginia record. Dobbins Bennett versus Norton. Uh, 1926, it was 195 to nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as I kind of researched that game, it was kind of interesting as it was talking about this gentleman who, I don't know that very many people remember him, but they all remember his son. It was uh, Mr. Barger. Everybody knows his son, Powell. So he was one of the, one of the stars in the game. Um, and the coach got mad because the second string allowed the other team to move the ball and get a first down, so he put the first string back in. Who is the first 1,000-yard rusher in NFL history? Uh, 
Beatty Feathers played at Virginia High. Which player was immortalized in the Guinness Book of World Records for his 61.8 yard punting average against the Chicago Bears in the snow? Bobby Cyphers. Um, I believe he played, played for DB as well. Um, do you know which school won the national championship for high school in 1972? Did I hear it? Tennessee, T Tennessee high. high, yes. Which NFL player holds the record for most rushing yards per attempt? 8.44 yards per carry is still the record today. You know the name because I've said it earlier. Beatty Feathers. Um, the other thing I'll mention about our local, our local foundation is uh, since uh, 2019, the National Football Foundation has a team of distinction and they, and they honor about 80 high school players every year in that. For the last three years, one of our players has been selected uh, onto that team of distinction. So we've got some really good student athletes and, and our scholarships don't go necessarily to the best football player, it's the best overall uh, individual. So they're, they're scored on their football abilities, their classroom abilities, and also their community service. So there's three things that go into it. So the guy may be All-State All-American, but if he's got a 2.0 grade average, he's not going to make the scholarship team. So it's got to be overall, and these guys are all, you know, we've had several All-State and 4.0s and, and different criteria. The picture you see on the screen was actually um, the scholarship class from uh, 2020. And you'll notice that it was done outdoors because there was some event going on that year that kind of prevented any gatherings indoors. So we held it in a church parking lot. Um, the kids were so excited. The parents were excited that we actually still did something for them that year to let them get out and still be honored. Um, our, next, our next banquet and award ceremony, in case anybody's interested, it is open for the public, is uh, gonna be April 30th. It starts at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we serve, serve a breakfast buffet. The cost is $35 uh, for that. We'll be honoring the, the local high school students and we'll also be inducting four new members of the, uh, to the local Hall of Fame. And in case you're interested, Brian asked me and I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll say it. Uh, the, four, the four new members are uh, Hal Miller, who played here locally. Uh, his wife was, uh, was a judge as well. So a lot of you probably know her. Um, Carol Dale, from, uh, she played at J.J. Kelly. He was on uh, Vince Lombardi's first two Green Bay Packer NFL teams. Uh, I think most everybody that I've talked to you know, know, remembers Carol Dale. Um, and then more recently, we've got touchdown Tommy Sams from Happy Valley and David Bybee, who played on that Tennessee High uh, National Championship team. So those will be the four people going in this year. Um, our, our criteria, we have a nomination process, which is open to the general public. and. I've got some cards over here. If anybody's interested, you can get one of those. Got the website, um, which is pull the screen up and go to the Hall of Fame page. The nominations is not open right now, but it'll be reopened pretty soon. So if there's a player that you're saying ought to be included, nominate them. We, we, we encourage that. Uh, then the selection process, the membership gets to vote. If anybody's interested in being on um, in that process, join the National Football Foundation. You can do it through the website. Um, cost, I believe, is like $40 a year, which goes into the, into the scholarship fund. So it's a, a very nominal amount and gives you a chance not only to vote for our local Hall of Fame players, our local scholarship winners, but also the National College Football Foundation. I'd love to have thousands of members. So we have a nice block vote uh, to go in. Al Wilson from Tennessee was most recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, couple years, like 2019, our local chapter was selected as the outstanding chapter, uh, one of four in the entire country. And my brother and I got to go to New York uh, to the award ceremony and talk about a, an event. Uh, I'd love to have something similar here, but our cost and our, our, you know, we don't have quite that kind of sponsorship level to, to put on an event like that. But we got to have dinner with Archie Manning, Peyton Manning. Um, I sat next to this gentleman, his name was Ronnie Lott, played for San Francisco, and all the NFL players were coming up and looking at me and him going, do you know who you're sitting next to? And I said, 
yeah, that's Ronnie Lott. And Ronnie goes, no, let me introduce you to my good friend, Don. And we had just met. So, I mean, these guys were just down to earth. And Jake Plummer was inducted that year. And he sat out in the lobby and talked to us for an hour. Just story after story and just, what, what are you all doing? What's going on back in Tennessee? And so they're like, Jake, we need you. We got pictures in here. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm talking to my friends out here. I'll be with y'all in a minute. Easy way to him just, you know, oh, I've got to go, guys. No, he stayed and talked. These guys were just so cool to be around. Um, but um, with that, and the other thing I'll mention to you, uh, in case there's any golfers in the room, uh, June 25th, 8.30 a.m. is our uh, golf tournament that we do every year. This year it's going to be held at Medivue. Um, cost is $75 for, uh, per player. If we do four-man teams. So, you know, get, to get together with some of your friends and come out and play at shot or uh, best ball. So, you know, one person can drive, one person can putt, you got a good team. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll take any questions that uh, anybody may have. I'd... Easy crap. Oh, here we go. How do you raise your funds? Mainly through the golf tournament. That's, that's, been our, that's been our main thing. Uh, we do have a number of individuals um, that, that will make donations for us. Um, we have a uh, kind of a fundraising packet that we do if you'd like to be like a sponsor. We have different sponsorship levels. We sell ads for the golf tournament. We sell uh, you know, signs for, for the holes. We sell ads for the uh, program, for the Hall of Fame program. Um, so just little, I mean, just little money here, little money there. Um, not at this time um, we we would love to have more participation from from them uh, but but at present it's it's all been done internally um, just just locally going door to door and saying hey would you like to you know buy a sign for fifty dollars and like hey sure um, so Yes, sir. Uh, how many scholarships do you award? And uh, can you give us an idea of our schools in this year? The, um, for the last few years, we've been very fortunate that every school that's nominated has gotten something. Um, and I will say generally it's 10 to 12 local high schools. Um, I, I'm trying to think offhand some of the names. DB's always been in it, they've, and they've won a couple times. Um, we lost a couple schools with the mergers last year, but, but West Ridge is, is rejoined. Uh, we, had, we had North before. Volunteer, I think, is in for the first time this year. Science Hill is, is back, Tennessee High. Uh, we've got one or two schools in Virginia. That's, that's kind of a, a point of emphasis is to get more, more involvement from them. Uh, several of the Carter County schools, um, uh, Hampton, Happy Valley, Elizabethan are all, are all involved. And I'm trying to think who um, the last we've had, I don't remember who won last year was from Cloudland, I believe. Um, before that, we had, we had a gentleman from uh, Tennessee High won this year. And um, uh, the guy from uh, Jackson Harrison from Sullivan Central won it in 2019. And he was the first player to actually go into the national team of distinction. So. We've we've had some really good some really good players, but it's, most of the local schools are are involved, uh, which which is good. And we'd like to we'd like to get more involvement from Virginia. So if anybody has contacts to Virginia schools, you know, let us know. Be, we'd like to get them. All, all the coach has to do is submit the names, and then there's I think a hundred hundred dollars, hundred and fifty. I don't know the exact numbers that they that they pay, and then that covers their meals and and everything going into the event, and then we do the scholarships. And the top, the top award, we'll say around $1,000. Um, and again, the more money we raise, the more money we give out. Uh, and, and that's our goal. We, we could probably give out a couple big scholarships, but it seems like rewarding them all has, has helped a little bit. Um, a good question. Yes, ma'am. So um, you sort of answered this about <clears throat> the geographic distribution of Native Under Schools. Um, how many per year? I mean, I, I can sort. Is that one year a group up there? It is. Okay. So, uh, how many? Do you have like a 
target that you're going after, or is it like a percentage of the nominees? Or um, we would we would love to have every school involved. I, I, I kind of coined the phrase a couple years ago, you know, we're, we're still growing and every year we get more. Um, but I think, you know, it's almost like this is the elite 10 or the elite eight or whatever. But um, the ones we get, we're, we're always, the, in the, 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 the players that are nominated, their stories are, are so great. And then last year we started something new, we give them a brag sheet. Let them tell us why they deserve the scholarship. We heard from your coach, we've heard from your teachers. Now, you tell us what football means to you. What have you done to earn this scholarship? And some of the things they tell you would blow you away. There was one kid that was homeless. You know, he lived in a box and was basically teaching himself and, and got himself going. And I mean, all of us are like, holy cow. I mean, you know, it's, it's so it's, but the, when you look around the room and it's, it's like one of the, uh, oh, it was, um, Sensabaugh that came and spoke one year and he said you know normally I've got this speech I prepare and I don't have to make that speech you you've all got good parents you all got good upbringing you're you're you're, you're the class you're, you are the future I mean this this is a, a great bunch of people here you know and so it is it is the cream of the crop it is it is our future and that's why I'm kind of proud to help help them go go to that next level and we had them all, all the winners came together last year when we did the, the first Hall of Fame um, here in Kingsport. So that was kind of neat letting them all come back and meet each other again. But yeah, I mean, we, we don't have a, a target. We'd like 100% of all the schools. It's gonna take a while to get there, but each year we get, we get new ones added. And, and so we have to raise more money every year to reach our goal of making sure every kid's gonna you know, get a scholarship. The top winner's gonna get the big, the big amounts, but. Yes, sir. The inductees that you select, what are the criteria about having worked here, having been in football, or, you know, or do they have to be tied here in high school? Or? So, so far, I mean, I, what we've looked at is, is one of, they had to have played high school football in, in our area, the Mountain Empire region. So there, I think there's actually a list of schools in, under the nomination piece that tells you if they're in Virginia, these are the schools that would qualify. If they're in Tennessee, these are the schools that would qualify. And our next step is to expand into to North Carolina. So here's the, here's the teams that, you know, the schools that would qualify. And so our goal then is to reach out and get some of those schools involved. And, and again, the more, the more the more we can help people, the better, the better we are, the more outreach we get. But uh, yeah, as long as, they, as long as they played high school ball, you know, if, if there may be, like a referee may not have played high school ball here, but he may have refereed um, in the area. And, and same for some of the coaches. They may not have played here, but they coached here. So they had to be involved at one of our local schools. Last time I was at Meadowview, I saw, I guess, a sign that was, you have to excuse my ignorance, but there's some type of virtual item that's going to go in place at Meadowview. I'm not sure if, if y'all have seen as, in the entrance as you go into Meadowview, the, the Hall of Fame information is there, but is there something along those lines? Oh. I'll, I'll answer that two ways, and maybe maybe I get to your to your answer. But th and this is this is right here is an artist rendition of the 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 Hall of Fame at, at Meadowview. It's actually built now. You know, feel free to go out to Meadowview. It's right there when you're going into the convention center um, entrance way. We've got two walls that are already paid for, so we got a little room for expansion. There's two more walls that we'll look to build at some point once we raise those funds. But um, there's a, um, a plaque right here on the side that's, that's got a, a what is this, Q, oh, QR code, thank you, I just Q something. So you can scan that with your phone, then it would pull up our website from there, so you can, you can then look and find each of these players. There's a, uh, a summary of their, of their uh, career what they did in football and after. So if you're looking at them, go, I don't know who that Steve Spurrier guy is. I've heard the name, but I don't know who he is. You could scan the, scan the code, find his name and go, oh, okay, well, he played at Tennessee High and went to that ugh, team down in South somewhere. Uh, sorry, I'm a Tennessee fan, you can't. Um, but, uh, 
The other piece of it is, is part of our expansion and our, and our next goal is we want to have a audiovisual system set up in the entrance here that would, you could go up and then type in the name, type in Jason Witten and it would pull up everything about him and potentially have video highlights and other things from him, have that running on a loop, you know, the, with a big screen up on the wall. And so you would get that information going, anybody walk in with whatever the, the, the video is at that time. And so you could pull up your own or watch what, whatever's coming up. So I'm not sure if that was what you're asking, but. QR code, that's what I'm Okay, saying. yeah. So, that, so the QR code would give you our website, which allows you then to, to research the players and eventually we'll have a, a display set up where you can type in a name and pull up information. And at that point, you know, my goal, my vision is to have Casey Morrow or, or Kenny Hawkins or somebody introducing that player. Oh, you selected Steve Spurrier. Let me tell you, you know, so, which I think will be a whole lot more exciting than me reading it to have them narrating. Uh, give Bob Kessling or somebody to, you know, diff different people I think in this area that, that would, that could lend their voice to that and, uh, but you know, there's a cost to that and we don't have that money just yet. And what we raise is our, our first focus is the scholarship fund and then we're trying to put money back to this as well. So if you, if you know anybody that would like to, uh, you know, donate, put their name on something like that, we'd be happy to, to do so. That's both the walls that were built came from a generous donation. Um, the, the audio visual won't cost quite as much as that, but you know, there's still funds there. So anyway, what else? Yes, sir. Agreed. It's it's a goal. You know, we'd we'd love to get them more involved. Um, so far, it hasn't worked out. Uh, we do have um, the uh, athletic director at East Tennessee State University has has come out every year and, and supports the program. Um, you know, Randy Sanders has been very generous in, in, in his time with the scholarship program. So we're hoping that that continues to grow and that, you know, it's like I talked to Randy, I said, you know, you know a handful of people that would, that would carry some weight around here. You know, a phone call to somebody like a Peyton Manning, you know, would, would generate interest immediately. You know, you would sell out whatever venue you would go to at that point. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's a great idea. It's something we'd love to have. Um, it's just getting in touch with that person at the right time and, and them saying yes. Um, you know, and it's, and it's like last year when we did this, the ceremony, Steve Spurrier was, he would call and talk for hours. You know, so excited, but I can't make it, guys. I'm sorry, I can't, I'll, I'll, I'll do an audio and I'll send it to you. You know, I'll, I'll send you something to, to play, but I can't be there. And it happens, you know, same with, with Jason. He's, he's a high school football coach in, in, in Dallas now. So my time is, I'm tied here. So we get that, you know, it's, we'd love to have them. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I, I, kind of, I kind of always throw it out. I, I, any help you can give us in, in those lines, we appreciate it. You know, if anybody here is interested in, in joining the foundation, even if it's, you just join so you can vote, you know, we appreciate that. Uh, if you want to join and get involved, we appreciate that too. You know, that's, you know, our, our, our efforts are two or three times a year, we put a little time in, you know, to select the, the players, the scholarships, and to put the golf tournament on. But other than that, it's just go have fun. Um, <laughs> You know, you know how that is. What else? Yes. How many people are inducted into the local Hall of Fame? Last year was the first class that we put in, and we, I think, inducted 12 at that time. 12 what we call legends, 12 in the legend class. Each year, we select a, a one high school player, uh, one football official, and one coach. So you'll have three from the last nine years. So 27 of those were also added to the wall last year. And so each year, one more of those will go in. Um, but we're, I think our goal is to three to five. I mean, it depends on how, how the balloting goes. I mean, if it's, we don't have a set 
75 percent of the votes go you know it's it's more where's the cut you know and so if, it, if this is where most of the people are voting that's where we're going to stop um, and that worked out i think we have a, a good class for this year you know the, you look at the nominees you could throw darts you can't go wrong um, you know there was there was one of the players a couple of players from north carolina that i think as we expand are going to be no-brainers he's shuler you know, everybody's like, well, yeah, vote for Heath. And I said, well, until we get North Carolina officially in, I don't want to put him in. The other guy's name is um, Charlie Choo Choo Justice. Does anybody know that name? Uh, I mean, that, I didn't. You know, I was just looking, trying to find names and to nominate from North Carolina, and I came across this guy, and I'm like, holy cow, who is he, Superman? You know, I mean, he's so good that North Carolina actually marks the 22-yard line in blue in his honor. Uh, his team was so good as as a team, they they committed to Duke, and they were they were undefeated, unscored. I mean, they were just tremendous. And but then something happened, and the entire team instead of going to Duke, all joined a different team, Japanese bomb, bomb Pearl Harbor, and so they joined the military, and went went their own you know went separate ways. And he came back to North Carolina and was two time runner up to the Heisman. I mean, it's it's a great story as you read about this guy, but. You know, so these these are folks that I that I can see being inducted at some point, and then there's there's quite a few here locally as well. You know, so we mentioned Sensaba. We've got, uh, you know, I'm not going to throw a bunch of names out because you all know them. You you know, you've you've played or watched them play many times. And what we need is folks like you who are who are football fans who have watched this watched our local kids play. Is who were those great players from the past? And I think a lot of times, like the local Hall of Fame. Yeah, there's those names we all know, but it's that local legend that, you know, from, the, from these, some of these small schools that people tell stories about. You know, the old Al Bundy story, if you ever watch Married with Children, you know, like, scored 26 touchdowns in one day. You know, those stories that you want to, you know, immortalize. And just read, reading the game where, where Dobbins Bennett and, and Norton, you know, that's just, you know, those, those players were immortalized. And so that's what we want to do. And one of the things at the at the Hall of Fame that you you will kind of enjoy seeing is we have a, I call it a trophy case, but a display case with paraphernalia. Uh, we've got some football helmets. Uh, one was donated from the University of Tennessee. We've got uh, a, a book in there that's the history of Dobbins Bennett football. You've got the Tennessee High National Championship trophy in there. Um, lots of just cool stuff to look at. Uh, some stuff that uh, Steve Spurrier donated and others. I think there's the uh, the actual program when Bobby Dodd was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame is included in, in that uh, display case as well. So, excuse me, just some really cool stuff to, to look at. And again, when you notice it is full. So, you know, that's that's another thing is we're going to look to purchase a new display case in the future to add more stuff. And I think my brother's got a room at his house that's just stacked as stuff that people have donated that we'd love to put out for, for the general public to, to enjoy. Yes, sir. Got Bobby Peters. Anybody talk about ever talk about him? I'm not familiar. Um, as a... As a So you're saying he should be nominated? Yeah. Give him the man the cards. There you go. Dominate. Yeah, I like. I just. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? It's good to see you vote for somebody. 